I think they're telling me to hold. <laughs> hey everyone, Stacy Wallace here with another episode of Warrior DNA, creating marketplace leaders that lead from a higher standard and who are passionate about making life better for many. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to turn your pain points into power plays that give you a distinct advantage in the marketplace. I'm so excited about today because we have got so many exciting things that are happening around us. We're getting ready to come out with the Mission Possible online study. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that at the end of today's episode. But today we want to talk about turning those things that have happened in your history into a power play for your destiny. Now it was Napoleon Hill that once said, every heartache, every failure, every adversity has within it a seed that contains equal or greater benefit. Or in the words of Kelly Clarkson, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, stand a little taller, me, myself, and I. So think about the things that you have survived in your life. Think about the things that should have killed you, should have wiped you out. Think about all those heartaches. You know, a lot of people live in their history as if that's really the summation of their life. They whine about it. They moan about it. They live life from the perspective of their pain points instead of recognizing. If you are breathing right now and you are watching this video, that means that there is a power play in store for your future. You can actually turn those pain points into an advantage, into a power play that gives you a clear advantage in the marketplace. So you, I guess you need to know what is a power play. Well, first off, you know, I used to live in Canada. And when I lived in Canada, I'm a dual citizen of the Can Canada, uh, Canada and the U.S. And when I lived in Canada, I was an avid hockey fan. In fact, I used to date a hockey player, and so I went to all the games and loved it. So if you don't know hockey, you may not know a power play. There's other sports that have power plays as well. But in hockey, it basically means that your opponent has created some type of infraction, and they're put in, one of their players is put into a penalty box. Now, what that means is that leaves you in a clear advantage because you've got an extra player on the ice. This, for those of you who don't know, is a hockey puck. <laughs> so when you are in a power play situation, it means that you have a distinct advantage to be able to play, have plays that you otherwise wouldn't be able to run, have a perspective that you otherwise wouldn't have, and give you the opportunity to make a move that you otherwise wouldn't be able to make. So today, we're going to look at a few power play situations. People who've turned a pain point into a power play. This is going to help you in your business. It's going to help those of you who are in sales. You're tired of knocking on doors. You've been talking to people and you get no after no after no. Some of you, maybe you've gone through incredible adversity. Well, this episode today is going to help you see things from a perspective that very well may give you the winning edge you need. See, the reason why I do Warrior DNA is I believe that I have been called not only in the marketplace, I've been very successful, God's blessed me in business, but I've also been given a voice, a voice to be able to help create a fresh perspective in the marketplace so that you can advance the kingdom of God in your job, in your home, in your schools, from the White House to the crack house, everywhere that you happen to tread and walk. There's a plan and a purpose for you to use your life to create a power play. Now, what do I mean by that? If you're a Christian, guess what? You got an extra man on the ice. You have the Holy Spirit. When you walk into a boardroom, people are always asking me, Stacy, where do you get this bold tenacity to walk in? I mean, I negotiate huge contracts on behalf of hundred million dollar, billion dollar companies. And why is that? Simply because I believe every time I walk into a room, I believe that I am in a power play position. I believe that if God is for me, who can be against me? That allows me to enter the room with a certainty that outweighs the uncertainty against me. It gives me an ability to see with a clear advantage. Today, I want to help give you that clear advantage. Now, for me, this started off when I was little. I'm going to give you an example of a power play situation. So when I was born, I was very, very sick. I had pneumonia over and over again. And finally, they diagnosed me with cystic fibrosis. Now, some of you have heard this story, but I want you to see it from my parents' perspective. They were in a power play situation. 
A lot of families, they get emotional, they cry, because really, 47 years ago, that was a death curse. There wasn't a lot of science behind CF. So for them, it was basically your child's probably going to die in the next two years. But my parents didn't see it that way. They believed they were in a power play situation. They took me as a little baby to the church. My father was a pastor, and they prayed over me. And from that next day forward, instead of just accepting the report of the doctors, they decided they were going to believe in the report of God. Pray over me, and whether you believe in miracles or not, maybe it was a really bad diagnosis. My lungs were filling up with fluid, and then the next day, it was completely gone. So I believe in miracles. That's why I believe that I was healed. Now, that perspective that my parents had, they didn't see the pain point even though it was a horrible diagnosis. Instead, they saw that if God is on our side, we can actually make a move on this right now. Even though it's a bad diagnosis, we can use this opportunity to make a move on the enemy and give God a clear advantage to have a story that will transfer to generation after generation after generation. Well, let's take a look at another story. You know, maybe you remember Bethany Hamilton. So Bethany Hamilton was the young girl. She was 13 years old and she got bit by a shark. She was actually a championship level uh, athlete. Um, at 13 years old, she went out and of course the shark bit her, took off one of her arms. Listen to this quote. When I was young, I gave my heart to Jesus. And since then, it's been a strength in my life. Really through the shark attack and all the hard times we went through, it gave us unity and perseverance to push through the crazy stuff we never imagined would happen to us. So maybe life has hit you hard. Maybe it hasn't been a shark attack, but maybe it's been financial devastation. Maybe it's been bankruptcy. Maybe you feel right now that your business is falling apart and you're ready to quit. Here's what I want you to learn from Bethany Hamilton. Bethany Hamilton didn't come off the board. She instead challenged the board back. She pursued her dream even harder. She didn't let a shark dictate whether or not she was going to be a championship athlete. Instead, of course, she went through some depression, tried to figure things out. What am I going to do? How am I going to have to learn how to surf without an arm? There was some adversity. But here's what's amazing. Sometimes if you fall off the horse, the best thing to do is get back up, get back on, readjust. She had to relearn how to surf. She had to change her equilibrium. Sometimes you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, but you're expecting different results. Maybe it's time you adjust your approach. Maybe it's time you adjust your process. Maybe it's time you adjust the people that you're surrounded by, the coaches in your life, so that you can get back on the surfboard and pursue your dream even stronger. See, here's the beautiful thing. What was an absolutely devastating pain point, I'm sure that hurt a lot, she turned it into a power play. What do I mean? Today, Bethany Hamilton is known all over the world. She's been used to speak and to train and to teach young people and athletes what it is to overcome adversity. They've even done a movie on her. That would never have happened if it wasn't that she got her arm bit off by a shark. So maybe some things have come against you that are actually not there to destroy you, but maybe they're there to give you a platform that you can speak from so that you can become a marketplace minister, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, an entrepreneur, a teacher, a stay-at-home mom, it doesn't matter. Your world is your pulpit, meaning you're not called to do church inside of four walls. You're called to be the church, to be the voice, to be a messenger of hope. Let's take a look at another example, giants. What do you think I'm going to talk about? Well, I'm actually going to go to my book, Mission Possible, here, because there is a great story that I tell here. And for those of you who you like all the stories, what we do on Warrior DNA, I challenge you to go ahead and register for Mission Possible online study. It's going to be a 28-day online study that we're going to do together, and you're going to see how I train day after day after day. You have a curriculum. You have a book that goes with that. You're going to be able to see that at stacywallace.com. But in 1 Samuel 17, verse 31, it tells the story of David, a young shepherd boy who had the heart of a champion. He exemplified a winning attitude. Now, David was not trained in battle per se, nor was he expected to do anything really great in life, but he did come from a very good family. 
but he was the youngest of all of his other brothers. I mean, the expectation would have been that one of the older brothers would have been the one to do something great. But so David was scorned by his older brothers. But while some viewed David as weak, God saw David as a warrior in the making. God had a strategic plan for David's promotion and advancement. And that's why God was preparing him with the lion and the bear. See, God had a strategic plan. The nation of Israel was being taunted by the Philistine army and challenged to send a warrior to battle their most powerful giant named Goliath. It was a one-on-one, winner-takes-all battle of the ages. I love the way God uses things in our life, adversities in our life, opposition in our life, We think it's the end of the world, right? Your arm gets bitten off by a shark or you go through bankruptcy or your husband leaves you or you fail a grade. Really what God is doing is God saying, if maybe, and Kelly Clarkson, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It's preparing you. So watch this. Here's David. What a lot of people don't realize is David was being prepared the whole time by God to slay Goliath. He's sitting out there. Now, some people thought that, you know, like a slingshot is a little toy like we use today. But a slingshot back then was a major weapon. So in the middle of the night, when I think this actually is one of the best business development stories. That's why I talk about it all the time. I could get so many trainings just out of the story of David and Goliath. But think about this. So David is in the dark. He's taking care of the sheep. Nobody's applauding him. Nobody's celebrating him. He's just doing the deal, like knocking on doors, doing the sales, getting the nose, feeling like, God, when is it going to be my turn? Why do I have to be the one to this? I mean, think about how many of you right now, you see other people getting to be on stage. You see other people going through promotions and you're thinking, God, when is it going to be my turn? Well, that was little David. But one day, David, who had been practicing with that slingshot, he had taken out the lion, he had taken out the bear, and probably a lot of coyotes, David was sent to go check on his brothers. And that's when David had the opportunity. Now imagine, David was a smart kid as well, right? It said that David was ruddy, he was strong, he was good looking, and he came from good lineage, so he was also smart. So he walks into the presence of this giant, Goliath. They say uh, Goliath was probably about six foot nine. Now back then, Um, giants were known to have eye disorders. They were actually known to have um, movement issues. So now put all that metal on top of Goliath. He wasn't going anywhere fast. And he probably couldn't see really good. So David gets up there and you saw the scripture where the giant says in 1 Samuel, he says, come at me and I'm going to cut you down and I'm going to feed your carcass to the birds. Well, that didn't move David. Here David decided not to wear the armor. He's fast. He knows what he can do in the field. And he's really, really, really good with a slingshot. Why? Because he's been practicing. Some of you have been practicing on trying to get sales, practicing. And you're like, oh my gosh, when is it ever going to click for me? Don't give up. Here's what happens. So David pulls out his sling and all he has to do is get one shot in that spot. Do you think he could? I remember when I was little, I had a BB gun and we would line up Dr. Pepper cans across the fence and I got really, really good with my BB gun. I could put it right in the middle of the D on Dr. Pepper. I bet you David got really, really good with that slingshot. And some of you, the script that you're using is your slingshot. You need to get better and better and better with it. As you know, the rest of the story, David takes Goliath out. Goliath says, you're coming at me. I'm going to feed you to the birds. David looks at him in a power play situation, knowing I've already taken out the lion. I've already taken out the bear. This guy is moving a lot slower than they are. I got this. He looks over at him. He says, you come at me with all that. I come at you in the name of the Lord of hosts, and I'm going to feed you to the birds today. See, you've got to begin to get that kind of certainty to understand that even though you've had some pain points, they've been preparing you for a power play. I'm going to end today's episode telling you a story about my son. Now, many of you heard the story seven years ago when my son actually um, got stung four times in the middle of the night by a scorpion. And for months, it actually, for all of us, it kept us up at night because we found 22 scorpions in two weeks. They came out and they said the house was infested. We were renting it while I was um, going to all the treatments for my dad before he passed away of cancer. 
obviously we decided to move out of that house very, very quickly, but not before that was in our minds, our psyche, the fear of seeing scorpions crawling around 22 scorpions in three weeks. That is a lot of scorpions. And so here we had this, I sat down with my son. We all had this weird sensation. We, we didn't live in fear, but now all of a sudden we were seeing scorpions even when we closed our eyes. And I sat down with my son and I said, you know, son, consider this the lion or the bear. Your scorpion is something that God has allowed to happen, but he's preparing you for something greater in the future. When you can gain victory over the scorpions in your life, God will move you on. Just like he says, when you prove faithful over the little things, I'll make you ruler over much. Well, a couple weeks ago, my son calls us and says, hey, I'm up at Petland and they've got this emperor scorpion and he was fascinated with it. And we were like, that's good. Leave it there. Come home. We don't need scorpions. Well, just a few days ago, he went back to Petland and he called us and he said, I really want to buy this scorpion. And I'm like, okay, no, that's not good. (laughs) And he said, no, just hear me out. He said, you know, I went to nationals on a speech when I told the story about getting stung four times by scorpions. But I want to tell the devil the rest of the story. And that is, I want to show that I have dominion over scorpions. That which once enslaved me in fear now becomes my slave in an aquarium. And so I am going to let you know that this is actual size (laughs) of the scorpion that now lives in his bedroom. It's called Eli, which is from the valley, I mean, Elah, which is from the valley of Elah. That's where Goliath went down. You know, today's a great day for you to take dominion over the pain points in your life and turn them into a power play. Turn them into something that God can use in the marketplace to give you a voice that transcends your story. Give him an opportunity to use you as one that slays giants. This has been an episode of Warrior DNA, and I encourage you to check out all of our Warrior DNAs on my YouTube channel. You can also obviously scroll through Facebook here. Go to stacywallace.com. Check out the Mission Possible book and online series. I look forward to seeing you guys there. We'll be posting below the winner of today's share, like, and win contest. God bless everyone. And remember, warriors don't retreat, they reload.